All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. This is a quote from Blaise Pascal. This is the same Pascal who is responsible for Pascal's triangles. If you've studied some mathematics and you're familiar with Pascal's triangle, those are the words of the legendary Blaise Pascal. I wanted to mention that because I think self-study requires that you sit alone in a room with a math book and you do math. And I think that is a beautiful thing. In this video, I'm going to start by answering a question that I received from a viewer related, I think, to self-study. I'll read the question, and as always, if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below because people do read the comments, and your comments are super helpful because you leave a constructive comment, you can help other people, and really that's, that's a good thing. So the subject is math advice for engineering students. The message reads as follows. Hey, math sorcerer, I am a second year mechatronics engineer student in Hungary, and I would like to ask what you think the most important fields of mathematics are for engineering students. I have a break till February, and I would like to work on some math in my free time. What do you think I should spend my time? I have completed Calc 1 and 2. Thanks. And his first name is, well, he calls himself Norby, and that's all I'll say in order to not reveal anything really personal. So, Awesome. I think it's awesome that you're even thinking about doing some self-study. I think self-study in some sense is one of the purest forms of learning because it's like Pascal says, right? You're in a room alone and you have the book, a pen, a pencil, and you're just trying to absorb and learn the material. Um, there's something about getting your mind to work in that way that is just very beautiful. So here I have a book that basically tells you what is the most important mathematics for engineering. It's called Advanced Engineering Mathematics, and it's by Erwin Kreisig. So Erwin Kreisig was a very fantastic mathematician, and he is an excellent author. He has another book on functional analysis, which is undoubtedly the easiest to read functional analysis book ever written. This book is a classic. It's good for math students, it's good for physics students, and it's perfect for, obviously, engineering students, as the title implies. The fun thing about this book is that it's very like compartmentalized. So it has like lots of little sections with lots of little topics. So you can explore, you know, different areas of math and you don't need a huge time commitment, right? Say it's a Tuesday and you want to do some self study in because you've only got 15 days left of vacation. You can sit down for an hour with this book and learn some math, go about your day. And believe me, you're going to feel better for it. Your mind is going to feel crisp. It's going to feel clear. There's, there's a clarity that I think mathematics brings to, at least to my mind, and I think other people feel that too. It's, it's just a really nice, it's a beautiful subject. Let me show you some of the topics in this wonderful book. And this book, uh, I'll try to leave a link in the description, but let me just give you a heads up. I'm pretty sure there's no way to get it inexpensively. Like, it's going to cost some money. Um, it's not like $10 or anything like that. And you say you're in Hungary, which is awesome. I don't know how difficult it will be to get there, but this is a very famous book, so it should be possible. Yeah, Erwin Kreisig, Professor of Mathematics. To me, books like this are, are priceless because they contain so much knowledge. It's just incredible. Here's the copyright. Look at that. 1962-1967 by John Wiley and Sons. Super old. I just, got, I just got to give it a whiff. I'm sorry. I just have to. I just, just really quick. Oh, so good. So good. Purpose of the book. This book is intended to introduce students of engineering and physics to those fields of mathematics which, from the modern point of view, seem to be the most important in connection with practical problems. Yeah, and so he, he chooses a bunch of topics here. He talks about his justification for choosing those topics, which is what your question was. What are the most important topics? So I'm going to answer that question by letting Erwin Kreisig answer it for us because he certainly is, uh, you know, a lot more qualified than I am. I mean, he wrote this wonderful book. Uh, and I am just a reader and an appreciator of, you know, a work of art like this. So it starts with a review of some topics from algebra and calculus. And it's a really short review. Look at the page numbers, page 1, page 8, page 10. And look at the topics, right? Elementary functions and partial derivatives, second and third order determinants. Like what? It's all over the place, right? And that's what makes it so much fun. It's not like you have like this like long string of, you know, dependencies. It's all really self-contained. Complex numbers 
polar form of complex numbers, some general remarks about numerical computations, solutions of equations, approximate integration. Like what? He throws in a approximate integration in the introduction. I mean, that's awesome. Not something you would expect. And you've got some ordinary differential equations in chapter one. A lot of the stuff you would see in a differential equations course. So you mentioned you took Calc 1, Calc 2. This is awesome because this is going to give you a heads up before you take differential equations. And then it's got more differential equations, more differential equations. You study this in differential equations as well. This is Laplace transforms. And then you've got some Calc 3 stuff, which you've yet to take. So already it's preparing you for two of your future courses, right? Again, you took Calc 1, you took Calc 2. This is going to help you in differential equations. This is going to help you in Calc 3. More Calc 3. It's going to help you in linear algebra because you've got some matrices and determinants. So it's just a wonderful book. It's like a, a treasure trove of mathematics. Fourier series and integrals. So this is something that uh, I didn't study a lot personally. I did study it though as an undergrad in partial differential equations. So this is something you might see there. And then there you have partial differential equations. So that's, that's because that's typically where it's taught. Complex variables. So this is something you'd see in that course. So this is going to give you a heads up on multiple courses. And it's going to be awesome because you're going to take those courses and you're going to come into them and you're going to say, oh, hey, yeah, I read that in Kreisig because I bought that book that the guy on the internet said was awesome. And you were going to feel incredible. Look at that. It even has probability and statistics and more complex analysis stuff here, residues and stuff. It also has answers to the odd number problems, which is fantastic. Obviously, it'd be better if he had answers to all of the problems. More is better. But... You know, all of the answers aren't aren't going to be there. It's not going to happen. Got some applications here to circuits, as you can see. So pretty cool. Uses differential equations to model circuits and solve problems. Here's more differential equations. Let's go to the beginning so you can see how it starts. So it has a really gentle introduction, which I think is good. See, it starts with elementary functions. Review of some topics from algebra and calculus. So a, a Calc 1 student can pick up this book and learn some mathematics. And you're not going to understand everything, but I mean, look at that. In this section, we shall present a collection of some basic formulas for reference. Here's the graph, the graph of the exponential function e to the x, where e equals, and I love how he writes all the decimals. It's like, yeah, we're going to write them all out old school, right? Doing math by hand. Basic identities. The inverse of e to the x is the natural logarithm ln x. It satisfies the following identities. Yeah, super key, right? Super important. So just like a massive review there. And then when you turn the page, it gets even better. I've read all of this. I've read decent chunks of this book, and I've done some of the exercises. Talks about the sine and cosine functions. Talks about even functions, odd functions. That's a nice memory trick. If you remember that, um, that uh, cosine is even and sine is odd, what you can do is you can use that to memorize the power series, which you probably know from Calc 2. So in the power series expansion of cosine, you only have even powers, right? So... And in the power series expansion of sine, you only have odd powers of x. So it's just an easy memory trick. Talks about some trig identities, some important ones. Uh, in particular, I was, I was going to say, it's funny. I was going to say, in particular, it talks about this one. And then I looked here and it says, oh, it says in particular. That That's funny. It's it's kind of like uh, Kryzik knows what I'm thinking. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, it's just a beautiful book. Really wonderful. And that's just the first chapter, right? That's just the first uh, first section, rather, first section. And here's some of the problems. I've done almost all of these exercises, if not all of them, actually, from, from this particular uh, section. And they're pretty easy. And you have answers, again, to the uh, odd-numbered odd numbered problems. Partial derivatives, so it goes on to that. It gives you a geometrical interpretation of the first-order partials. It's funny. I was going to say, here's a geometric interpretation, and I look, and then here it says it. It's like, I, I'm about to speak because I see something, and then I read the book, and the book says it for me. It's it's just it's just awesome. I love this book. So this is a legendary book that is going to help you. So my advice is get this book. That's my advice to you. Buy this book. Um, it's it's not super inexpensive, but the thing with books, you know, you buy a book like this, and let, let's just say I don't know what it costs, but let's just say it costs you you know a considerable amount of money, whatever that is to you. Let's say it costs fifty dollars, right? That's a, lot, that's a lot. I rarely pay you know, $50 for a book. I do, I do. I, I recently bought, not recently, but a couple months ago, I bought um, Serge Lang's Basic Mathematics and that, that cost me some money, right? So you have it for the rest of your life, right? So for the rest of your life, you have this book and you can pick it up and you can read it whenever you want. If not today, maybe tomorrow. If not tomorrow, maybe next year, but you can add it to your collection 
and it's a book you'll own forever. Maybe when you're 80 years old, you'll finally decide to read it some more and then you have it there with you forever. Knowledge is a beautiful thing and this book is perfect, I think, for what you want. So just to recap, um, his question was, in case anyone has any uh, thoughts, I'll read it again one more time. Hey, Math Sorcerer, I'm a second year mechatronics engineer student in Hungary, and I would like to ask what you think the most important fields of mathematics are for engineering students. I have a break till February, and I would like to work on some of my math in my free time. What do you think I should spend my time? I have completed Calc 1 and 2. Thanks, Norby. So that's my advice. My advice is get this book. It's, it's a simple answer, um, but it's an answer. And the most important topics, apparently, are you know multivariable calculus, uh, differential equations, and complex analysis, and some probability and stats. That's mainly what what we saw in this book here. So, Erwin Kreisig, Advanced Engineering Mathematics. It's a legendary book, a beautiful book. There's other good applied math books. If you all have any recommendations for other really good math books or other topics that um, this person should study, again, his name was Norby, N-O-R-B-I. Uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, your comments help a lot. Anyways, I hope everyone has enjoyed this video, and thanks for visiting my Mathematics YouTube channel on the internet. Until next time, good luck, and take care.